Nuclear plant zero days for sale. The EU sells out the internet in Europe. The Senate sells out the American people online. Facebook's got your back if a nation state's hacking you. And hey, the librarian in Congress beat back the DMCA a tiny bit. I'll explain in just a second. Welcome to ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for October 28th, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I gotta drop a big thank you out to everybody that supports the show on patreon.com slash threatwire. We are more than halfway to our next goal of two episodes per week, and if you want more of Darren's face right up here instead of mine, please support us on patreon.com slash threatwire. I thought we'd start this week's episode on a mostly cheerful note. Check out this tweet from Cory Doctorow, a full-on activist for internet freedom and a really nice guy. Quote, the Librarian of Congress grants limited DRM breaking rights for cars, games, phones, tablets, and remixers. As in the Librarian of Congress says you should be able to repair your car. Put any operating system you want on your phone or tablet. Break DRM to fair use remix content from DVDs, 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 or Blu-rays. And yes, thanks to Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, in case you didn't know, every three years, the Librarian of Congress gets to pass ruling on what things justify breaking the digital rights management put on stuff. Um, not to make the stuff to break the stuff, though, or as, as Mr. Dr. O puts it, quote, the Copyright Office believes that Section 1201 of the DMZA prohibits it from allowing the development of jailbreaking tools, so all they're granting is permission to use random, anonymously produced tools that you find somewhere on the darknet, or whittle yourself at your own keyboard. Keep that in mind as you read the coverage of the Copyright Office's ruling. They've given you permission to do the stuff, but not permission to get a tool that makes that possible. And then Corey says, it gets worse. Example, your mechanic does not break into your car, only you are allowed to do so. Example, you only jailbreak games that require a server to play them, and only PC games, no consoles. And that doesn't even begin to hint at the extraordinarily ridiculous process of petitioning for exemptions, which pretty much comes down to big money corporations firing up the attack lawyers to try to make sure you can't say, fix the stuff you own, quick nod of the hat to I fix it here, it's interesting. There's a link to the article on Boing Boing. You really should read it because it's a lot more complicated than you think and it should be a lot simpler. I should probably mention that the DMCA thing is pretty much the good news this week because if you're over in the EU, well, they kind of voted against net neutrality. Excuse me, um, they voted for specialized services on the internet, or as Barbara Van Schweik, the professor of law and director of Stanford Law School's Center for Internet and Society told Ars Technica UK, quote, if established companies can pay so that their content loads faster or does not count against users' monthly bandwidth caps, then those who can't pay don't have a chance to compete. Boy, I hope I got her name right because she is awesomely smart. In theory, the bill is supposed to end roaming charges in the EU, which sounds good, except, well, the German Pirate Party MEP Julia Reda told ours, surcharges will only be suspended up to a fair use limit beyond which they still apply and continue to hinder the breaking down of barriers within Europe. So if you said, ah, a little net neutrality for a cheaper phone rate while I'm in Switzerland, you got screwed. Way to go, EU lawmakers. Yeah, EU politicians kind of suck as much as U.S. Senators who pass CISA, aka the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act, because hey, why wouldn't you pass a bill to improve cybersecurity that's opposed by an astonishing list of U.S. tech companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Reddit, Twitter, the Computer Communications Industry Association, dozens of civil liberty groups. There are literally dozens, perhaps even hundreds of the biggest names in technology and protecting your rights to technology. Wired says, I love this, even the Department of Homeland Security, Kirby's pissed about this, Why? by the way, I just, I just, Kirby, Kirby's angry. In any case, Wired says, even the Department of Homeland Security itself warned in a July letter that the bill could flood the agency with information of dubious value at the same time it sweeps away privacy protections. Homeland Security is like, <laughs> too much data and it's, there's no privacy. Oh wait. CISA is going to allow companies to share data with the Department of Homeland Security who can then, well, share it with other government agencies. Yeah. And you know what? The OPM showed us just how good the U.S. government is at protecting your personal data, right? Maybe the Senate and House won't be able to resolve their CISA bills and the whole rotting mess will go down in congressional flames. 
A few brief notes before I go. The registered John Layden reports users of WhatsApp need to be aware that the popular messaging service collects phone numbers, call duration, and other information according to new research. That's a quote, by the way. And hey, pen testers, SCADA, aka Supervisory Control of Data Acquisition Box, Zero Days, and the tools to vector them in are available for sale. Uh, yeah, you know what? Just go read Thomas Fox Brewster's uh, story. Want some nuclear power plant zero day vulnerabilities? Yours were just 8,000. Well, 8,000 and the three grand for the tool they run on. I actually know somebody who could probably use this stuff at work. He tests security for his company. They, they do things over there to secure the things. It's a good thing. I hope. By the way, the register piece, good read. Links to the show notes. Wait! Did I say there was no other good news? I got to give a shout out to Facebook. This might be a first in my life. Did you know that Facebook, quote, will notify you if we believe your account has been targeted or compromised by an attacker suspected of working on behalf of a nation state? Facebook adds, we do this because these types of attacks tend to be more advanced and dangerous than others, and we strongly encourage affected people to take the actions necessary to secure all of their online accounts. Think about it. While my beloved Senator Dianne Feinstein is figuring out better ways to turn the entire internet over to three-letter agencies for storage and scanning, Facebook is trying to protect everybody that got nuked in the OPM attacks from China. Way to go, man. Way to go. Did you find something new and useful in this show? We would love to bring you ThreatWire three times a week, 52 weeks a year, rotating Darren Kitchen, Shannon Morris, and myself, and we want to do it completely independent and ad-free. If you want to help make that happen, check out patreon.com slash ThreatWire, and if you do, and send us a picture of your favorite animal, not just the cute ones, I say send in the picture of the iguanas and the angry gila monsters, we'll put it right here. Hey, if you can't donate, a like, a share, or a subscribe go a long way too. And you can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet.